The French East India Company was on a mission for profitable trade in the Indian subcontinent. And like normal businesses, they too faced challenges. A part of the challenge came from the conflicts among the European powers in India, where each one was trying to establish trade supremacy. The French were no different. Being the last European power to arrive, they had already drawn the shorter stick. So they found themselves against more established trading companies. The trade conflicts sometimes grew so large that they evolved into full-fledged wars spanning numerous years. The French found themselves in one such massive conflict against the English, which led to the Carnatic Wars. Let us take a closer look at the events that brought upon this historic showdown between the two European powers. It was the mid-18th century, and while both the French and English were eyeing for trade expansion, the Mughal Empire was disintegrating. This was an opportune time for both the European powers to grab political power along with newer territories that would serve as both markets to sell their goods and source of cheap raw materials. More political power and territory was good news for both the companies because this meant supremacy in trade. After all, trade was the primary intention of these companies when they first came to India. Meanwhile, there was growing political instability in the southern part of the Indian subcontinent as well. The Nizam of Hyderabad, Nizam ul Mulk Mir Kamruddin Khan, also known as Asaf Jah I, was old and was frequently in war with the Marathas. Other younger members of his court were more interested in the outcome of his death, leaving room for internal political problems. South of Hyderabad, where smaller states like Mysore, Kochi and Travancore on the Malabar coast and in the east, Madura, Tanjo and Trichinapalli. Since the south housed many smaller kingdoms with problems of its own and hardly any unity, it would have been much easier for the Europeans to meddle in local politics. It was the perfect situation for expanding trade and gaining political powers for both the French and English. It was just a matter of time before they began competing with each other for trade supremacy. The traditional rivalry between these two powers back in Europe was an added impetus to their rivalry in the Indian subcontinent. That's right, the French and the English have historically been on the opposite sides. And often, this rivalry translated as an extension of the wars of Europe over commercial trade and colonial territories. And that is exactly what happened with the beginning of the Austrian War of Succession in Europe. We will get to the details of Austrian War of Succession a little later. But the point is that this war in Europe proved to be a contributing factor to the increasing bitterness between the English and French companies stationed in India. While factors like the declining Mughal Empire, the political instability of South India, and the fierce competition for trade supremacy were slowly setting the stage for a clash between the two European powers, the Austrian War of Succession was an immediate trigger for a war between the English and the French companies in India. Well, not a war, but a series of three wars that went down on the pages of history as the Carnatic Wars. The Carnatic Wars, in particular, the first Carnatic War began with the Austrian War of Succession in 1746, and the third Carnatic War ended with the conclusion of the Seven Years' War in 1763. The Carnatic Wars got its name from the word Carnatic, which was the name given to the Coromandel Coast, and it is given to the Coromandel Coast and its hinterland by the Europeans where these wars were fought. Let us take a closer look to the causes and the course of the First Carnatic War that took place from 1746 to 1748. 
eat. The death of Charles VI, the Holy Roman Emperor in 1740, and the question of the accession of his daughter, Maria Theresa, to the throne led to the unrest in Europe. This unrest led to the Austrian War of Succession that spanned between 1740 and 1748. France, during the war, supported the parties that opposed Maria Theresa's accession. For France, this felt like an opportunity to bring down Austria, a long-standing rival. But it proved to be a failure, as the parties the French supported were on the losing side. On the other hand, Maria Theresa's claim to the throne was backed by the English, bringing the French and English on opposite sides. During the course of Austrian War of Succession, the French and English were instructed by their homelands to not engage in any hostilities outside Europe. However, neither party adhered to this and ended up engaging in conflicts with each other in North America and the Indian subcontinent. In the Indian subcontinent, hostilities between the French and English broke out in 1746. The English went on the offensive and struck first. In 1745, the English navy under Barnet seized French ships from the southeast coast and threatened to attack Pondicherry as well. The English did this to provoke the French and it worked. At Pondicherry, Joseph Francois Duplex, the Governor General of the French, who was stationed at Pondicherry from 1742, sought help from the French colony in Mauritius. He wrote to Admiral La Boubonnet, the French governor of Mauritius. La Boubonnet responded and set sail towards the Coromandel coast, destroying an English fleet on the way. The French did not stop there. They had bigger plans that was taking Madras, an important English trading center in South India. So, essentially, the French went straight for the juggler. Duplex, along with La Boubonnet, attacked Madras in 1746. Madras fell and was in total control of the French, both on land and water. But La Boubonnet had other plans. He was handsomely bribed by the English to return Madras, and he just did that. Duplex was furious with this act, and he recaptured Madras. The English found it unfavorable to lose an important trade center like Madras to the French. So the English sought help from the Nawab of Karnatik, Anwaruddin, as Madras was part of Nawab's territory. The Nawab wanted to assert his position and dominance to the European traders, that he was still the master of the region. So the Nawab sent an army led by Mehfuz Khan. The army consisted of 10,000 strong men who were Indian natives. The Nawab's army was met with a small French force consisting of 230 Europeans and 700 native soldiers with Western military training. The French were under Captain Louis Pagadi. The battle took place at saint Thome on the banks of the Adya River. The Nawab's army was defeated by the French. This solidified the French's upper hand in the First Carnatic War at this point. The Nawab was defeated by the French in the Battle of Adyar, but the battle in itself holds significance. The battle revealed the immense superiority of Western armies over Indian native troops. The French army was equipped with better weapons and was organized as opposed to Nawab's native army. In terms of weaponry, the Indian pike was no match to the Western musket and bayonet used. The natives stood no chance against the French artillery. The battle also demonstrated 
that a small but disciplined army like that of the French was superior to a large but undisciplined and unwieldy army like that of the Nawabs. The First Carnatic War also highlighted the importance of a strong naval force. From the beginning of the war with the attack on the French ships by the English to the capture of Madras by the French, the Navy played an important role during the Carnatic War. After two years of war, the First Carnatic War finally ended with the Austrian War of Succession drawing to a conclusion in Europe. The war ended with the signing of the Treaty of Aix-la-Chapelle by all concerned parties in 1748. The terms of the treaty were mainly negotiated between Britain and France. The terms of the treaty stated that the French were to give Madras back to the English. In return, the French were given back the fortress of Louisbourg on Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia in North America, which the English had captured during the course of the Austrian War of Succession. Seems like a fair deal and one would think that this would finally end the Anglo-French rivalry. But that's not what happened. The First Carnatic War was only just the beginning. It was probably because it ended without a clear victor, although the French displayed great strength. The First Carnatic War had instigated a desire in the French to beat the English in the Indian subcontinent. With cunning tactics, Duplix marched forward with full force to expand French territories. However, he met the English once again, leading to the Second Carnatic War.